Attention! Although my content is usually family-friendly and suitable for all ages, Phoenix Wright Justice for All is a game that has been rated T by the ESRB content rating system, and as such, the videos in this Let's Play may contain blood, mild violence, and or suggestive themes. So, viewer discretion is advised. Oh boy, we've arrived at the episode. The episode that I, and probably everybody who has played this game before, have been waiting for for the entire let's now play. Now I'm just curious. In my, in my, in my opinion, possibly top five plot twists of all time is going to happen in this episode. Okay. Am I anywhere and near it? Also, no? ah, there's a bug. On one me. of these people is going to die. No, just kidding. <laughs> oh, I was like, oh, is it going to be Von Karma? Because I really hope it's not Pearl. <laughs> it's Phoenix Wright, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Phoenix Wright's yeah, right. dead. The next game is just anyhow. Uh, Farewell my turnabout, we're finishing up the investigation today. Well, let's let's go. go back to criminal affairs. Okay. March 22nd, police station, criminal affairs department. Oh, Mr. Wright, please, you have to help me! Uh-oh. Mr. Powers? What happened? Why are you here? Uh, I, uh, you see, I got roped into this somehow. Oh, is he the witness next time? <laughs> what? And now I'm going to testify at tomorrow's trial. <laughs> Sorry, Powers. So the decisive witness is Mr. Powers? I was talking with a detective until a little while ago, and I was on my way home, when all of a sudden, you there, you're under arrest, and I was brought back here. Uh, oh. They said my face and whole self in general looked suspicious or something. Hmm, well, I guess I can see how they thought you looked suspicious. I'm just a normal guy on an exercise show for kids. Is that a crime? No. I don't know why Talk they hours. arrested you. You look swag. Tomorrow's testimony. Snazzy. <laughs> so about this testimony you're giving, uh, what are you going to talk about? Uh, I really don't know yet, but it sounds like I saw something pretty important from what they tell me. Uh. <laughs> well, actually, when we went to look around, he was just watching Pearl's. But Pearls should have been like, you know, there was this weirdo that ran through here. Like, she should have said something. Yeah, you saw something important. What was it? Uh, well, the detective told me not to talk about it. You can't tell anyone, and especially not that lawyer, he <laughs> said. Who do you think is that lawyer the detective was talking about? I'm going to take a wild guess and say it's me. Y yeah, you got it. Mr. Nick! Mystic Maya and myself were your only two allies in this whole world, but it's all right. Ouch. I don't really have a lot of friends, do I? What about I? Gumshoe? Gumshoe's got your back. Yeah, I know. And Larry, who... Larry's is... not in this. Larry's not Larry in this. Larry disappears after the first game. He does. That's a shame. <laughs> this He's is going to this... Beyonce. You go, girl. No, she broke up with him at the end. Oh, yeah, that's right. She's He's going to uh, Parisimo. Paris? You mean Paris? <laughs> but not Beyonce. Oh, okay. I don't know. This is going to do a lot of damage to Matt, you know. Because he's got that refreshing, like, a spring breeze image going. But what is he really like? Well, let's see. Matt's always been kind of a player with- Oh! Life. Could not tell that at all! He would never really turn a pretty face away, if you know what I mean. He'd always say, it's just a game to justify himself. Oh, he's no. a He's a host club member. He's a sleazebag, isn't he? Yup. What? How horrible! That's unforgivable! Oh, sorry, didn't mean to offend you. But you know, he said once that there's only one person in the world who won't swoon over me. Um, Xandrus. One person who wouldn't swoon <laughs> you over him? You know what? I bet I know exactly what's happening, man. He's like, oh my gosh, every girl in the world loves me except this girl. I'm gonna do everything in my power to get her. It's like, it's, it's like Gaston. Beauty and the Beast. It's, it's like Gaston. Beauty and the Beast. <laughs> Gaston's like, he even wears red. <laughs> yeah, Gaston's like, oh man, I need this girl more than anything, even though she hates me, but she's pretty. And Miss Adrian Andrews is pretty. And he's like, oh, okay, that, that is true, because Gaston, at least, he liked Belle to begin with, and it's just a coincidence she didn't like him back. Whereas it sounds like he's like, yeah, I love everyone, and what? Choose that for me. Gotta change that. <laughs> yeah, I think Gaston though is also that way because he's kind of like, even in Gaston the song, he's like, oh, girls, it's fine. We're gonna still hang out. <laughs> like after <laughs> no one can see you winking. You, you know what I mean. You know what I mean. Like the silly girls are nuts. Yeah, I know this because I've been in the show before. So. This manager, you know, Miss Adrian Andrews. Why is Mr. Power suddenly looking kind of energetic? Gossip. 
Oh, you see, I'm actually a sucker for gossip. Yeah, I, I mean, it. celebrities in their world have this dazzling sort of image, right? No. A dazzling sort of image? But aren't, aren't you a part of that dazzle, Mr. Powers? No, I'm more of a hairy, sweaty, smelly, bluish <laughs> kind of guy, you see. Aww. But it's okay, really. I get to hear plenty of gossip about a lot of the other stars around me as things happen. Well, that's true. Oh, hey, so did you hear about this yet? About Miss Andrew's mentor and her suicide? No! Please enlighten us! You mean Miss Impacts? We heard something about how her wedding was cancelled. Yeah! That's what I'm talking about! I thought about it a little in the other day, about that mysterious death. Hey, Mr. Wright, why don't you ask me about that? Go on, go ahead! Wow, just Mr. Tell Powers us. is so charged up, his skin is practically glowing with electricity. Uh, put I, the I, I wanna, I wanna present it. stuff first, because I think after that we don't get a chance to talk to him after. Oh, so. that's a shame. Here. Oh, I really owe you one. Oh, yeah. You already presented a lot of evidence to him. Well, we've got more recent evidence, so I'll present that instead. How about that? Also, it's playing the director Heidi music for some reason. Slash uh, Ben's music without Trevo. Sorry. Thanks for taking the time to show it, take it out and show it to me, but I'm uh, really sorry. I don't know if you got it. Cool. All right, fine. We'll go to profiles. Yo, show me. That's Juan's former manager, right? Celeste Impact. She was with Global Studios for a while way back then. But something's happened and she ended up moving to Worldwide Studios. Some things. As in... Well, there's no one left around who knows the details, you know? Only rumors are left now. Okay. Maybe business changed did something. Oh, that's right. We've already shown him. Yeah, he was interested in her for a little bit. Just a little bit. Well, I mean, you can pull off the cyborgs, dude. So yeah. you've, you've already got He's that going. He's kind of got that, like, Donkey Kong meets Sora type of look. <laughs> yeah, he looks a bit like a lion. A and that, bit. that's in, that's intentional. Oh, yeah, that's kind of cool. Um, I'm honored you're asking me. I don't know anything special about this person. Uh, sorry. Ah, uh, it's okay. You don't have to apologize so much. So sorry. All right, well. Dun, we've dun, shown dun, him everything dun, we dun, can. Dun, dun, dun. Well. Hey, so have you heard this? Celeste left a suicide note. Yes. And they say that Juan went and hid it. Yes. We heard about that in court today. But there wasn't any actual proof that she had left a note. Well, this is what I think. I think that something bad was written on that note. No kidding. Something bad for Juan, that is. Probably. Something bad for Mr. Corita. Why do you figure so? Well, before she died, Celeste talked with a few of her friends. And she said, it looks like I may have been caught by an insidious man. An insidious man? Does she mean Mr. Corita by that? Well, there's no one else that fits the bill, right? And that would be the reason enough for him to hide the suicide note. I see. Well, that's some good info. Thank you. Wait, was she, like, hanging out with her girlfriends like, Oh my gosh, they're getting married! Woo! Like, having drinks or whatever. She's like, oh man, this guy, I don't know about him. <laughs> I, I don't know, I'm trying to imagine, like, bridesmaid party having this, like, yeah, end the worst way possible. You're welcome. Mr. Ongard and Miss Andrews, they're both at the detention center right now. There are still things I don't understand or know about, I'm sure. I have to get the two of them to tell me everything. Mr. Nick, your phone! Hey, that's the Steel Samurai theme song, isn't it? I don't like the sound of this ringtone right now. It sounds kind of ominous. Y yeah I know. Please tell me it's Maya. Hello? We're in trouble now, pal! I'll, I'll be back at the office really soon! What's wrong? Something really unexpected just happened! Mr. Edgeworth, he... Edgeworth? Anyway, hurry up and get back to the office, pal! What, is he dead? I don't know what's going on anymore! It's no good! The end, I... Hello? He got cut off. Well, I have an idea of what might have happened. He was like, yes, we're forming a search party, a search team, and like, the assassin's like, that's not how I play. <laughs> Trying to shoot him. I don't think he's dead. I okay. hope not. He might have had, like, bullet to the shoulder again, and then he and Von Karma are matchy-matchy. Yeah. What th what's going on, Mr. Nick? Gumshoe said we need to get go back to the office right away. Th then we should hurry back! I'm scared to go back. What are you talking about? Mr. Nick, pull yourself together! Um... Maybe it'll be good news! 
Uh, <laughs> Mr. Ashworth's parties today! It's his birthday! <laughs> <laughs> Somehow I doubt that. Hi, Mr. Power, since you're a big old buffy guy, how about you come with us? <laughs> that sound good? March 22nd, right well, in company law out of offices. Order. Nothing seems out of order. Hey, pal! Mr. Edge was already back! Huh? Well, what happened? We got him! We know who bought that spy camera! Oh, it's good news. Huh? Th this quickly? And this bear's what gave them away, pal. The bear? I figured it out, pal. I figured that we should have been looking into the bear instead of the camera. Yes. Um, wasn't that Mr. Edgeworth that figured- Shh, Pearls. And, go on. There's only one person who bought one of those bears who's related to the crime. Who is it? Who would be so rude as to spy on another person in their room? Matt Ongard. Well? Huh? Matt Ongard, your client. That's who, pal. That stupid bug is still there's flying around. Yeah, there's these two bugs that are just like, are you recording? <laughs> Next time one of them gets close, At I least am they're smacking not demon them. Bugs. Yes, they're really tiny. That's good. And here I thought things couldn't get any worse. <laughs> you know what would be a funny practical joke? If I bought this stuff bear and put it in his room? <laughs> <laughs> and then someone else with the camera. <laughs> That would be hilarious. <laughs> Are you sure you heard right that the person who bought this bear was? I heard it from the department store clerk, pal. This is the credit card receipt for the purchase. It's for $3,800, pal. That's an exact match to the price of that stuffed bear. That's kind of ridiculous, to be honest. Did you see how huge it was? And it was custom made in, like, sure. Europe. So, a Still, receipt? It seems weird that he would buy it for him. Even if it had a security camera on it. Like you he wanted to make sure he would put it in his room. That's me. Yeah. And if he gets all these bears, he had to make it a really special bear, then. Okay. Assuming that he did actually put the Still, camera. Still, three thousand eight hundred dollars. Maybe, maybe a really good friend. Maybe he's down. A receipt? That's all you have? Nah, it's not just the receipt, pal. The store clerk said so himself. He told me, I'm sure I sold the bear to Mr. Ongard. I mean, the clerk even got Mr. Ongard's autograph out of it, pal. So I'm sure the person that bought the stuffed bear was Mr. Ongard himself. My... my sight is failing me. This can't be... Credit card receipt added to the I wonder. Record. I wonder if the killer's just like, You'll get this girl back if you do the impossible. <laughs> <laughs> if you get this guy declared innocent. A receipt for $3,800. It, it could be a test. It could be like, you need to do this thing, you need to get this guy declared innocent, and then it's the complete impossible, and then we go against his orders anyway, and then he's like, that was the right thing to do. Here's your girl back. Could be okay. That. I don't know. Maybe he's holding the assassin. Maybe he's a really weird assassin. It could be. Proof on guard bought a stuffed bear identical to one in evidence. Cool. Not. <laughs> so what about the spy camera we found? Ah, that was a dead end, pal. I mean, you can get this kind of thing from anywhere. But for now, I guess I can give these back to you for, for you to file away into evidence. Spy camera, transmitter, and stuffed bear refiled into the court record. I know you don't want to give up, pal. I never thought. I didn't think it was possible. The person who put the spy camera in Juan Corda's room was Matt Ongard. Why? Why would Mr. Ongard do something like this? I bet it was to catch Miss Andrews and Mr. Corrida in one of their rendezvous. I bet is not good enough for me. I have to know the absolute truth behind this camera. Are you going to see him? Mr. Ongard, I mean. Yes. I'm... I'm scared, Mr. Nick. I wonder... I wonder what we'll find out next. You stay with Gumshoe, you don't have to come! I'm scared myself, but I have to put on a good face for pearls. Matt Ongard, what in the world have you done? Well, what in the world are you hiding? Pearl, you don't have to stay. Yeah, You don't have I... to go with us. You can stay home with Gumshoe and make salad. <laughs> First, they have to buy lettuce, and neither of them oh, have money. They, they don't, actually. I think she might have more money than him. Yeah. I'm Here, sure. Here's some money. Here's $15. Go buy and make a salad together. We're going to the detention center. You mean just me? No, Pearl we, has to come with us. We, the collective we. <laughs> the royal we. <laughs> You're working really late, you know. It's already past 10 p.m., dude. Then why are the lights on? I think it's time you told me the truth. Uh -huh. Relax. Don't you know that ignorance is bliss? 
But if you really want to know, let's talk. Good for you. At least, like, acknowledge. Alright, we have five psych locks to break. Yep. This is gonna be tough. Also, the only person in the game with five. That makes sense. Matt's you, secret. If you're a celebrity, you have to be secretive about things. Otherwise, mm -hmm. some weird fan's gonna be like, What? I didn't know you had a second dimple! What? <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> you know what I mean? I didn't know you went to Taco Bell five <laughs> times in yesterday. four days! Yes, yeah, <laughs> no! People launch onto everything! Now, let's hear what this secret of yours is. What if Mr. Corita had been successful in his plan? What would he have disclosed? I told you before, dude. I don't know. I don't know anything about Juan, okay? Really? Look, Mr. Wright, I can keep on saying it until I'm blue in the face, but... I totally didn't pay Juan any attention the whole time that night. I mean, come on! I was in the middle of a nap! Don't lie to me. Huh? I know you paid close attention to Mr. Corita, especially on that night. The camera. Ah, ah. I uh, thought we already had damage. Yeah, we don't get it refilled at the end of the court. Well, Mr. On Guard? Hold on a sec. I'm gonna consult my friend, okay? He said I should snort while I give a good laugh. Um, okay, uh, here I go. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. I can't believe he can be so flippant at a time like this. Mr. On Guard, I don't think you need to, need to snort while you laugh, really. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad that's one. He has hilarious dialogue if you get that's stuff good. wrong. That's funny. Alright, yeah. Spy camera. Someone used this camera to secretly film Mr. Corita's room the night of the murder. Secretly film? What? And then sent the images the camera took with this transmitter. Wow! But dude, where was this camera you're talking about hidden? In the bear! <laughs> the bear! <laughs> I was hidden in the guitar case. <laughs> Mr. Lawyer Dude, I'm really tired. I know. But dude, you look even more tired than me. Why don't we call it quits for today and get some sleep? How does that sound? What made you say that all of a sudden? Well, you're here showing me stuff that doesn't make any sense. Oh, oops. I guess I really must be tired. But I'm not giving up just yet. The spy camera was hidden in this bear's eye. A bear that was supposed to be a present from a fan. Hmm. I guess Juan had a few of those kinds of fans too, huh, dude? Actually, I wouldn't say this bear was a present from a fan. Hmm. You sure, dude? Who else could it be from? The person who gave this bear to Mr. Corrida was... Him. This is no, I, the bear gave it to us. I didn't mean to push that, actually. That works. Well, Mr. On Guard? Hold on a sec. I'm gonna ask my mom, okay? He's a mom? Yes! Well, he. Every oh. human being in history has a well, mom, okay. actually. No, but I didn't know if, like. I guess she. Yeah, he wouldn't live with his parents. That wouldn't make any sense. Only Zendaya lived with She him. says I can't be friends with someone like you. Uh, Mom <laughs> is savage. You go can't home. If you don't go away, I'm gonna call the police on you. Dang. <laughs> That's strange. I thought the answer was right there in front of me. <laughs> All right. What I meant to do, I was going to say, like, what power you do? <laughs> Mr. Ongard, don't you know this bear from somewhere? I don't think I've ever met Mr. Bear before, dude. Aw, but he says he knows you. How could you forget such a great friend? What else did the bear tell you? He says that the one who put the camera in his eye was you, Mr. On Guard. If I didn't know how you work in court, I'd think I was in some serious trouble. Come on, this is all a joke, right, dude? You're just pulling my leg. No. Looks like you're just not ready to give up your secret yet. Well, do you have any proof you want to show me first? I mean, I have four Cyclops left, dude, so... <laughs> Here is proof that it was you who put the camera inside the bear. Well, the receipt. Yep. The bear told me! <laughs> well, come on, Mr. On Guard. Hold on a sec. I'm gonna ask my grandma, okay? <laughs> Grandma's just told me. Did you know? It's bad to whistle at night, dude. Because snakes will come out if you do. Um. 
My grandma, she knows all sorts of stuff. I think you'd better learn from her example, okay? Grandmas are awesome. <laughs> Grandmas are awesome. Unless you have a terrible grandma, in which case I'm very, very sorry. Yeah, I know people with some terrible grandmas. We have two great grandmas. Oh yeah, they're awesome. Is he telling me to think carefully before I speak? Ah, so close and yet so far. I have here one credit card receipt, Mr. Ongard. It's from when you bought the stuffed bear. Dude, all you can tell from this is that I spent $3,800. I go to that department store all the time, okay? Yeah, I got these sweet shoes. This $3,800? This could be the toothbrush I bought that one time. A uh, A $3,800 toothbrush?! <laughs> it's ivory, and it's got elephant hair for bristles. Ew, elephant hair? Is that what rich people use nowadays? That can't be illegal. No. That's gotta be supporting poaching. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, the store clerk clearly remembers you and your purchase. After all, you even gave him an autograph, did you not? Nope. Dude, you should have said that earlier. Um, so can I ask you this one thing? Yes? You're my lawyer, right, dude? So, if you are, then why are you looking into stuff like that? Because if I don't know the truth, I can't help you. Sounds more like stupid lawyer talk to me. Hey, let's stop talking about this, okay? No, not yet. I haven't asked you why you set up the camera yet. And what your secret is. Of course, it would be strictly confidential. So, what are you going to do now? I'm going to find out what I want to know. Because I must. The reason you hid this camera in Mr. Corda's room and filmed it in secret is... And now we actually get a tough one. <laughs> yeah, we finally do. Um... I wonder if he actually knew that the conference was going up, and he's like, Dude, I have no idea what's going on. Maybe it's just the gossip rag. You wanna try the gossip rag? Could just be. Adrian Andrews? There's a rumor going around that Miss Andrews and Mr. Corrida were having secret meetings. You, who is keeping tabs on Mr. Corrida, you are going to reveal this as fact and turn it into a scandal. Isn't that right? Dude, you can be such a moron! Huh? Oh man, Mr. Lawyer Dude, that kind of scandal? That's the good stuff! That's what we in the industry call juicy! The good stuff? Juicy? Look, we can get publicity without spending a penny with that kind of stuff. I mean, if people stop paying attention to us, then it'd be the end, dude. Too bad that wasn't your intention. What are you talking about? I wish your reason for spying was something so innocent, but it wasn't. You didn't spy on Mr. Corrida because of Miss Andrews. Then there's only one reason I can think of why you would do such a thing. The real reason you set up the camera in that Mr. Corda's room was... So you actually needed to do that in order to get nope, this part? No, that is completely optional. Oh! But that's really cool, though, had to have special dialogue for that. That is cool. The real reason... Is because Bada's up... camera was stolen, so she couldn't do it for you! <laughs> no. The real reason you set up the camera... Um... I mean, I... You think it's the press conference? That he knew about it ahead of time? No, because I don't think he... He he wanted... So the goal, basically, is to get all of the press off of him. Because if no one's paying attention to him, then everyone's paying attention to him. If no one's paying attention to Mr. Corita, everyone's paying attention to this other guy. Yeah. So I'm trying to figure out, like, is he putting a camera in to, like, show... Something How boring else? his life is or something? I don't know. Not like that, but... Is it just simple and I'm not... Kind of, but also a little more intricate than you might think. Is it because he wanted to film him being mad that he didn't get the award? How would we show that, though? That's the question. Yeah. That's the problem, is I'm like, I have a few ideas, I just don't know what ev evidence to present. Okay. Um, I think the picture I... below. The hotel oh, guy map. Mind. That's not important. Um... Is it because of the suicide? 
suicide note? With the hidden note, he wanted to try to see where it was hidden? Either him, or about Miss Andrew's attempted suicide. That doesn't make sense. No, that doesn't though. make any sense, yeah. So Let's try that. that. Nope. If I really wanted to set up a spy camera, I wouldn't have set it up in Juan's room. It would be in your office, dude. Huh? My office? Well, dude, you're always saying really absurd things, right? It'd be like getting the comedy channel for free! <laughs> wow! Ah, I'm so close! I can feel it! If you're done laughing, you didn't spy on Mr. Corita because of Miss Andrews. Was it because of, um, Celeste? How so, though? Well, it's because of the manager and Andrew's mentor. It could be... Well, but that wouldn't make any sense because she's dead. Right. And he didn't think about the suicide note. Okay, I'll just say this. You're, you're off track. I'm off track. Okay. Yeah. That's fine. We get to hear this nice Cyclops music. It is beautiful. Um... I am screwed, to be honest. I don't know. You don't know? It's cause of, it is because of that? Okay. I didn't know if- I wasn't sure if I could jump there yet. Okay. W what is this card? Maybe he doesn't know about this card. This is a certain man's calling card. The man's name is Shelly DeKiller. And I'm sure you know of him, don't you? Shelly DeKiller. Th th that's ridiculous! W why would I know some shitty scumbag like him? If you really don't know him, then why are you acting so jumpy all of a sudden? Why do you know he's a skatey, shady s With a name like this killer, I mean. This is it. I'm finally starting to get to the truth. I can't afford to make any more mistakes now. Mr. Matt Ongard, I know why you know Mr. DeKiller. It's because you're a hero of justice, you're his client, you're a star. I mean, I'm guessing it's obvious. <laughs> yeah, the two are kind of throwaways. You're right? a Star! <laughs> it's because you're the great hero of justice, the Nickel Samurai. Dude! You spied on that room to do one thing and one thing only. To expose Shelly to kill his fiendish plot. I... Okay. If that's what you think, then whatever, dude. I get the feeling that wasn't quite it. S sorry. Slip of the tongue. Mr. Matt Ongard? It's because... You're a star! It's because you're a star! Dude! What in the world are you talking about? Well, you're a star. And stars never need a logical or sane reason for anything! <laughs> I... Okay, if that's what you think, then whatever, dude. Let's go back. Oh. Mr. Nick. If you push yourself anymore, your soul will shatter. Um, <laughs> that's not creepy or anything. Please calm down, collect your thoughts, and try again. Ugh, made too many mistakes. So now you would have to do the whole thing over again. That and you have so you have one HP now. So Literally bad. just a sliver left. Where is client? Since you're the one who set up that camera, that means you knew. You knew exactly what was going to happen in that room. So, how? How would you know something like that? It's because you're his client. That's why. You hired Shelly to kill her to assassinate Mr. Juan Corita. The real mastermind behind this whole murder is you, Matt Ongard! <sighs> and here I was, trying to be a good boy for you, dude. I thought if you didn't know, you'd be able to do your job without feeling bad. Well, that's what I thought anyway. Mr. Ongard, you really did hire- Hold on a sec. I'm gonna consult myself, okay? Consult myself? Consult? Myself? Well, I guess it's probably about time anyway. About <laughs> time for what? I think it's time for you to meet him now, Mr. Lawyer Dude. Okay. Oh, hi! How do you do, Mr. Lawyer? I'm Matt Ongard. Hi! <laughs> he reminds me, you know who that, you know that guy from Fire Emblem, um, where he, uh... 
Wait, maybe spoilers for that. Um, you know Nurgle? Yeah. The guy with it, he flips his thing, he's like, blah! It reminds me of that. <laughs> well done, Mr. Wright. <laughs> I bet it wasn't easy to gather as much information as you have. Well, really? So you were Shelby DeKiller's client? Can we get Pearl out of here? You don't really think I would dirty my own hands in this, do you? <laughs> Here's why. It's chocolate milk, Marty. Jeez. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's uh, it it's, bran been, it's it brandy, I think. It would have been really dingy wine, to be fair. <laughs> well, what do you mean? And that woman, Adrian, was quite brave herself. Wow! Stick the crime on me. I didn't think she had it in her. But all I care is that Juan is dead. Here's, Isn't that right, here's Mr. Here's my Warren? hilarious thing. You? Through all the midst of this, he's like, let me call my mom, let me call my grandma, and I'm surprised they weren't like, Matt, you freak, get out of my house. Here's the thing, his, he could never call anybody. He had no reception, he can't call anybody, he's then literally why, been faking it the entire why time. Would he, uh, also, I just thought it was hilarious, you completely 100% called that he had scars under that part of his hair that one time. I'm like, what the? I, I literally almost was like, did you what? get spoiled on that? No, I didn't, I was just like, he's covering his hair. Which, er, he's covering his eye with his hair, which is interesting. That is like a flop style. Yeah. But also, this is possibly the best music in the game right here. It looks so crazy. This is awesome. Also, yeah. Th that's... You're lying! What a terrible... It's way past your bedtime, little girl. Yeah, it is! Go on, and let us grown-ups talk about more adult things. Okay, I'm gonna go home. But why? Why did you hide the video camera in... A weakling soon believes the words of others, just like that pathetic Adrian. So, basically, him and the killer are like, hey, let's go kill people. Like, yeah, basically, he knew about Miss Andrew's secret. Then how is he popular? Because he's hiding this, he's two-faced. Well, that's what I call it. Yeah, you did. But I'm no weakling. I don't believe in anyone, least of all assassins. What? Oh, come now, Mr. Wright. Assassins aren't about blackmail. So... Then, for this, he was like, alright, I need you to kill this guy. And then, Miss Adrian Andrews was like, this stupid idiot. I could use a stronger word, but I won't. <laughs> this stupid idiot, I'm going to, like, frame him. And then, and then like, the killer's like, um, can you please make sure that my client's safe? I knew that that was sketchy from the beginning. Oh, like, yeah, absolutely. I was like, oh. That's why I really liked how they did the Magatama thing at the beginning, so you trusted him. They turn their clients into cash them. cows by holding the sinful deed over their heads. To be honest, I didn't really trust them. <laughs> and a superstar like me, how much do you think I'm worth? Care to guess? And... and that's why... Yes, that's where the video comes in. It's got his face and the crime scene recorded on it, preserved for all time. With that, I can keep him at bay and even blackmail him if I want. That's right, that video is my... insurance. Isn't that what they call it, Mr. Wright? Why? Why would you do something so wrong? Because I'm a grown-up, and I can. Good enough an answer for you, little girl? I mean... Can we present stuff to him? I wanna. <laughs> Yo, look, I'm an attorney! I don't care what you show. I think you've gotten enough out of me, don't you? Enough freebies for today. The rest is up to you. Isn't that right, Mr. Lawyer? Alright, right. I'm assuming it's nothing. I was just laughing. This is great. This is <laughs> also so, so unexpected. This is, I'd say, one of the best plot twists that you would The thing is, though, I was kind of like, in my brain, like, oh, I guess it did his true nature, his whatever, and I was like, I thought this guy is evil. Did you expect him to be I like this, though? No, and that's why I'm so happy. <laughs> this is great. He's like, hey, he looks like the guy that's like, let's sit and have a chat. Yeah. Why? Why would you kill Mr. Corilla? Because he was about to sling so much dawn onto my beautiful public image. Scandals are a little annoying, aren't they? This is all because of that press conference, isn't it? If Mr. Corilla had been able to give it, then Mr. Ongard's secret would have... Ah, uh, well, that's what we call taking advantage of the situation. I had no interest in doing it, really, but bit by bit it crept up on me. And then the situation just presented itself perfectly. How beautiful, I thought. And that's... that's how Mr. Corinna ended up dead. Let me tell you something. I'm not like Adrian. I don't depend on anyone. People are simply things to be used. Used and thrown away. 
put on a sweet, innocent face, and people will swallow anything that you feed them. The sad thing is, that's kind of true. Yeah. Adrian fell for it. The assassin, too. Oh, and how could I forget? Even you fell for it, Mr. Lawyer. Everyone, all working their butts off for me, Matt Ongard. See, I want to see... The this would be really funny if it's like, hey, yo, Matt Ongar, we need you to do like this swimsuit thing. He's like, okay, oh, uh, could you do your hair different? No! No, 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 I can't, I have to have my hair down. It's like, oh, okay. Aw, <laughs> oh, did that leave you speechless? What a shame. What's wrong, Mr. Lawyer? You've grown awfully quiet. How could I have been so deceived by you all this time? Uh... When we first met, I asked if you had killed Juan Corita. And you answered so. very clearly that you hadn't killed anyone. Hey now, I never told you any lies. You didn't. The person who did the killing was that killer guy, right? All I'm guilty of is taking a cat nap in my room. You. You. You killed Mr. Corrida. Okay. <laughs> I dare you to say that in court tomorrow. <sighs> oh, but too bad. You can't. You're my lawyer after all, aren't you? <laughs> And you probably know that Maya's been taken. You could always drop my case and refuse to represent me. How does that sound? No. Ah, oh, but you can't, can you? That would be the one thing you absolutely can't do. My Mystic Maya. You wouldn't want to test the killer. He's a man of his word, or so I hear. You could end up getting a certain friend of yours rubbed out if you lose. Yeah. <laughs> you scoundrel. So if I were you, Mr. Wright, Esquire, I think I would give it my all tomorrow. Remember, everyone likes a happy win-win resolution. Uh, I'll get you for this! <laughs> That's such a cliché phrase. Juan said something just like that if memory serves. Of course, well, we all know how things turned out for him, don't we? Good night, Mr. Lawyer. Good night. Rest Maya. up. Maya, what am I supposed to do? And now, now you've finally found it. The starting line of this case. Edgeworth. I don't care for the horrid atmosphere here. Let's return to the precinct. March 22nd, police station, criminal affairs department. Well, right? What are you going to do? If you plan on changing your defense... <laughs> did, Mr. R did Mr. Edgeworth know the whole time, like, this guy? Mm. Yep, apparently. Okay. No! You can't do that! That's right. He's holding Maya hostage. What... What should I do? That's not something I can answer for you. Mr. Edgeworth! Right. Only you can decide where to go from here. One year ago, at that time, I didn't truly understand what a prosecutor was. And that is why I had to leave the prosecutor's office. I felt that I couldn't stand in a court of law until I knew what a prosecutor really was. And now, right, it's your turn. My turn? What is this thing called a lawyer? What can you do as one? You must find the answer, and you must find it on your own. I mean... Yeah. How about this music, though? This is good Perfect music. Perfect music for the situation. It is good music. I'm a lawyer. But to fight for someone who is clearly a killer... Matt Bongard. That man is really... Arrgh! It doesn't matter who. Every person deserves a proper defense and a fair trial. Isn't that the basis of our judicial system? Proper defense? But what exactly is that? Is it where a lawyer forcibly and blindly gets an acquittal through shouting and trickery? <sighs> Ironic that you of all people should say such a thing. Isn't that exactly how you have fought for your clients up until now? Uh... Well, that may be true, but... But that's... That's because I believe my clients to be innocent from the bottom of my heart. But if I were to get on guard an acquittal, that... That isn't a proper defense at all! I became a lawyer because I thought... I thought I could save people who were suffering and in pain. But when I look at this mess we're in... I can't even protect the person closest to me. Even if I win the case, I still lose in the end. I just don't know what to do! Right. Would you get a hold of yourself? You have it all wrong. Right, you're wrong! <laughs> oh, huh? We aren't some sort of heroes. We're only human, you and I. 
You want to <coughs> save someone? That's something easier said than done, wouldn't you say? That's... You are a defense lawyer. You can't run away from that. You can only fight. That's all you can do. People like you and Franziska von Karma are always using all you have to pin me down. You fight to the very end, even when you know the truth is not with you. But I'm not like you. I can't fight for a false verdict for a man I clearly know to be guilty. Franziska, she fights for herself. The only thing she fights for is her perfect win record. That's all. And? Isn't that the same as you? Isn't that why you ran away a year ago? Because your precious win record was destroyed? You are so petty! Not a good thing to be saying right now, man. I see. Now I understand why you despise me so. However, you are mistaken. What do you... Thanks to you, when you sealed off my path to a perfect win record, I began to realize the error of my ways. I realized that things such as a perfect record were meaningless. Huh? I don't believe you. Are you saying that's why you left the prosecutor's office? But then, why? Why are you here now? The answer to that is something you will find out on your own. I have faith you will see it before the verdict is read tomorrow. Yeah. I think the main thing for Edgeworth is, like, he's annoying, but relatable, and, like, very much like the truth bomber of this game. Hmm. I don't know. Like, I would never, like... If Edgeworth and I were at school together, or we had to work <laughs> together, I think I would probably hate him. But I would also be like, okay, but I understand where you're coming from, and I understand how you work is different than how I work, mm -hmm. and we can work together. I'm very much that kind of person, versus, like, if you got, like, two stubborn people, then they're just like, Ugh! Right. But if you can't, then you will be powerless to change the ending of this story. Mr. Nick! The transceiver! I'm sorry for what happened earlier. Well then, Mr. Attorney, do you wager you can obtain an acquittal tomorrow? <laughs> Just let me cry. My, my. What is the matter, Mr. Attorney? I don't sense your usual anger this time. Tell me, please. Why are you holding Maya hostage for Mr. Hongard's sake? Why are you- Why are you doing this for that cold-blooded killer? Right. Please don't misunderstand things. He is my client. Don't toy with me! A man who hires an assassin is just as much of a killer himself. Yeah, that's true. I believe you were asking me for a reason as to why I am doing what I am. Y yeah. This is what I like to call my aftercare. W what the heck is aftercare? My name carries a certain amount of honor and dignity, Mr. Attorney. I take great care to ensure that no suspicion falls upon my clients for my handiwork. That is what is called client relations, and it is a part of an assassin's duty. An assassin's duty? We were unlucky this time, and my client was arrested as a suspect. As a result, I did what I had to to enlist your expert help, Mr. But that Attorney. doesn't make any sense, because he wa um, Matt Ungard wasn't arrested until... Here's the, here's the thing. Shall we take her strangled? Juan Cordet and left the card down. Adrian was the first to find the body and she took the card. That's why nobody thought Shelly to kill her was behind it. So technically speaking, it is Adrian's fault that Maya got kidnapped. Yes, but what I'm saying is how did he know to kidnap Maya so quickly? Because they had that announcement through the hotel way later after that. He must have overheard us talking and figured out, oh, that guy's a lawyer. And Phoenix at this point is getting fairly famous. And they're like, Oh, hey. Okay. He's a great attorney. We need his help. And they right. saw two and people with his whip, and they're just like, okay. And they're like, don't kidnap the little girl. That'll be a real problem. But kidnap the 18 year old who is wearing a costume, and it'll be fine. Right. And I'm guessing the guy he was eavesdropping on us to know, like, oh, her right. name's Maya Fay. Cool. You have a phone call. And that's why. And to ensure that you would do everything in your power to the very end. <laughs> what is your name? I believe I told you once before, however, you did, but my name is DeKiller. Shelly DeKiller. Yeah, I know. You're Shelly DeKiller? Please keep in mind you do not have much space to maneuver with me. As a DeKiller, I always finish what I set out to do. 
if you fail to keep up your end of the bargain. M Maya! It would be my duty as an assassin to see to it that she receives a nice long nap. Now then, if you'll excuse me, if someone were to trace this signal back to me, it would be quite troublesome. Well, I mean, that's easy. Mystic Maya! Mystic Maya! <laughs> I, I don't know what to say. Edgeworth! Hmm? Did you hear that at the end of that transmission? Huh? Oh, that. It sounded like a cat. It can't be. That cat. Can it? What is it? I think- I know where Shelly Dekiller is holding Maya hostage! Edgeworth, have all police units head for Ongard Mansion immediately. Alright, you hurry over there as well then. Don't lose hope yet, Pearls. The fight has only just begun. Yeah! I didn't think to search his hotel? Or not his I, hotel. <laughs> his hotel? Man, <laughs> oh, you're oh, arriving at your hotel. hotel. No, I didn't think to search his house? It if seems odd. If you're arrested, <laughs> they search every place you've been. Seems like an oversight. March 22nd, on guard mansion, living room. Maya! Please answer us, Mr. Maya! Why is Pearls here? Get her out of Go here! Go back home! Make your salad! <laughs> We have this area completely surrounded. There is no way for him to escape. Well, the good news is we'll probably have Maya trial tomorrow. Assuming he's still in the area. Oh, he probably took I off. can't believe it. That butler. All this time he was to kill her. Butler more like butler. <laughs> oh, <geez. laughs> no, I'm sorry. That was, that was good. He and On God were working together all this time. I'm sure they had worked out a contingency plan ahead of time. Well, hey, look, it's a kitty. Kitty, 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 That's kitty, a bear. Kitty. Oh, oh, it's a figurine of a bear. But there's a lot of cuts in it for some reason. Figurine added to the court record. A bear? Isn't that more of a thing for Mr. Corita? Why would something like this be here? Well, it was there last time. Right, look down. There's a little pet door installed here. <gasps> oh, I'm sure that's for Shu. Do you think that this came through that little door? Ugh, this door, it's locked. Well, I'm pretty used to breaking doors down by now. Let's go, Edgeworth. <laughs> nice! I thought they were gonna make Pearl go through that. Wow! Ah! There's no one here! From the looks of this room, I would say this is Ongard's private lounge. Look at this, right? An antenna for sending and receiving radio signals and a VCR. Check inside the deck! If there's a tape, it would be an important piece of evidence. If we're lucky, it'll have the moment the crime was committed recorded on it. I'm sorry, but... The tape deck is empty. There's no tape to be found. No. But there's no mistake that someone used this to record something. It looks like someone took the tape we're looking for and escaped with it. This would be an epic anime scene, I gotta say. <laughs> and why is the door on there? We broke it down! <laughs> they ran out of spray, spray limitations. <laughs> We've searched all over. But it looks like he got away. That makes sense. I'm sorry. Looks like he slipped out of our grasp this time. And now, we've lost our only lead. Don't give up yet. That little girl is looking to you to be for her... <laughs> that little girl is looking to you to be her pillar. Yeah, you're right. We're close, I can tell. We've already set up checkpoints along every route leading out of this district. Leave the rest to us. Maya. Examine everything. Oh look, there's a little something on the stairs. This looks like a picture of Miss Impacts. With love, Celeste. Miss Impacts? You mean... Yes, Mr. Corita's former manager. Why would a picture of Miss Impacts be here in Mr. Ongard's mansion? And why does it say, with love? Hmm, See, this might be a clue. I called half of this. A little bit. But this is great! I'm loving this. <laughs> ah! What's wrong, Pearls? P please let me see that picture frame! Huh? What's so special about the frame? On the back! There's something written on the back of the frame! Maya. It's Mystic Maya! She left us a message! Wh what I thought you'd come. I knew you would. Now listen up! You better get on guard at guilty sentence, okay? 
If you get that creepy slime bag and not guilty, I'll never forgive you, ever! I'm fine, so you don't need to worry. There's so much I want to write, but I don't think I have a lot of time left. Pearly, you're there too, right? Make sure you help Nick, okay? Somebody's gotta watch out for the helpless lunk. Um, that's it for now, Nick. I guess I'll talk to you guys later. That's my... No! Mystic Maya! <laughs> right? What's wrong? Why the blank stare? Well, it turns out Maya figured out he was guilty a lot faster than Phoenix uh, did. Because he's in the mansion. Okay, yeah. here's the deal. She had a, l a little bit of time walking into the room. <laughs> she could have been like, mm, well, there's all these tapes of this movie with this one actor. What in. you didn't see is in the lounge on the wall that we don't have. It's like, on guard! <laughs> <laughs> a picture of him with his hair up. Uh. <laughs> What's wrong? Why the blank stare? Oh, um, nothing. Still has his own wine cellar, even though he's only been 21 for <laughs> We've searched the house, and this is the last room. It looks like he eluded us. Edgeworth? Yes? As far as clues go, I think this is about all I'm gonna get. But I'm still short one last thing. And what is that? Oh yeah, we need to go back and talk to her. Miss Andrews Cyclops. If I could just find out what secret she's holding. Turns out I'm in on this too. She flips her hair back. <laughs> <laughs> she's like another magic star. <laughs> yeah, that would be terrifying. That would be great. We've, I we've really seen both her eyes though. So then I think I stand. I mean, a yeah, you can see tomorrow. her eye through the... That would be so funny. I mean, she had like a Harry Potter scar on her hand, on her forehead. To blow this case wide open and expose the truth. <laughs> Laugh so hard. I think I know what you're thinking. I'll contact the detention center. Um, thanks, Edgeworth. Well, let's go, Pearls. <laughs> it's time to open the last lock. March 22nd, detention girl. center. Visitors Just room. let her go home it's and eat. She has eaten. She needs to go to Taco Bell or eat salad. No, she needs to have pizza. She never oh, had yeah, pizza, pizza before. Get pizza and you can have a salad with your pizza. Good evening, Mr. Wright. What's wrong? You look ill. Miss Andrews, I have come to remove your psych lock. Cyclock. I want to know, and you will tell me, your secret. Fine, go ahead. Try to break me if you can. We need to be... Guess what? This dude's a killer! <laughs> we know that now. Wow! Why frame him? Can you please tell me why you framed Mr. Ongard for the murder? I've already told you countless times. It's because I thought Matt was the killer. No, that's not it. I know you have a personal reason to dislike Mr. Ongard. Because he's a douchebag! He is! He, he could be like, hey, I need you to do- Maybe she's killed other people in the past. A Adrian? No, 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 not her as herself. Her as Mr. Ongard's manager. She's been bumping people off. And then this one time he asked someone else and then to try and frame her because he knew he would go to that- she would go to that room to try and meet the guy. And then it would frame her for it, but he man she managed to go back and That's frame That's really him. convoluted. It is convoluted, but it's Phoenix Wright! Miss Sanders, you may think I didn't hear it, but I know you said something earlier. You said revenge. So you're saying I was taking my revenge out on that, and that's why? What an absurd idea. I, I don't have anything I want to take revenge for. Miss Sanders, a woman who lives by being dependent on another person. There is something or someone in her past that would make her take revenge. Pretty simple. Yeah. What is Carol? No! <laughs> Are you trying to help or hurt Matt with what you're doing? What? What am I doing? This random haphazard throwing out of evidence you're so fond of doing. Th that's not what I was trying to do at all. Then refrain from doing it anymore. I guess I screwed up big again. So you're saying I was taking my revenge out on that, and that's why? <laughs> oh, that was really far. That was really far. So, do you know? It's pretty simple. Something regarding... Just impacts? Yeah, her suicide note. Celeste. There's only one catalyst that could cause such strong feelings, and even revenge. And that is Miss Impex's suicide. What are you trying to say? 
Celeste was Juan's manager. On top of that, the one who hit her suicide note was also Juan. What does all this have to do with Matt? You're right. Maybe Matt hit him. You haven't mentioned him. Yet. But for you to hate Mr. Ongard, it would mean that he must have had some relation to Miss Impacts and her suicide. Can you explain to me this relation between Celeste and Matt? It'd be interesting if they were... Well... Celeste... Roar. I was gonna say Celeste is <laughs> I'm secretly a bear. a bear designer. I'm and a bear. I'm a bear. <laughs> That's it? Yes. And what sort of relation is this supposed to explain? Well, Miss Impax and Mr. Ongards. Before you start, Mr. Wright, perhaps I should say. For, perhaps I should first request to see proof that your brain is wired correctly. Ah! I can't afford to mess up something as big as this. I need evidence that clearly shows a connection between Miss Impax and Mr. Ongard. Oh, just show the picture frame. That's yeah. easy. Yeah. <laughs> if I can, I can find the real story. I wonder if you'd like to try again, Mr. Wright. This. This is a photo of Miss Impax, correct? She looks younger than when she was when she passed away, though. What? With love, Celeste. This is Miss Impax's handwriting, isn't it? Where, where did you find this? No, that's all right. It was a theoretical question. Yeah, it is. I found this at Mr. Ongard's mansion. And after all this time... My last remaining secret's been revealed. <sighs> Celeste, she was supposed to get married to Juan. Yes, but I heard that it didn't work out. Because Mr. Corinna didn't want to get married to her anymore, right? Yes, because of Matt. B because of Mr. Ongard? What do you mean? I think I can see where this is going. Celeste. She was Matt's manager a long time ago. She was the happiest woman in the world at that time. But he's like 21 now. So if she it was, was a while ago. His age. Was she? Yeah. Oh, so how old is Miss Andrews? She's 23. Okay, I I still... Okay. I was working part-time back then, and I often saw the two of them together. So that's why, with love, Celeste is written on the frame of that picture. They were a couple, weren't they? Or, they were a couple, <laughs> weren't they? <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't anything as splendid as that. Celeste was being used. Toyed with until she was thrown away. That's so horrible. Also, fun fact, this music is a slowed-down, sad version of the Steel Samurai theme song. Yeah, it is. Matt's entire image is built around how nice and wonderful of a man he is. The scandal would have destroyed that. Which is why Celeste, in her kindness, moved over to Gl Worldwide Studios. And that's where she met Juan. She seemed really happy with him, even happier than when she was with Matt. Oh, no. Celeste and Juan were such a good match that they were even planning to get married. And then, he was suddenly called off. On the night Juan called their marriage off, Celeste, she killed herself. And that's why I framed Matt. It was revenge for Celeste and for myself. I'm sure even you can guess why Juan called the wedding off, right? Matt confessed to Juan about his relationship with Celeste. I see. So that's what happened. But! Then why did Mr. Corbin have to call off the wedding? I don't understand at all. It was probably because of his worthless male pride. Juan and Matt were always fierce rivals. Matt waited for the wedding announcement and then unleashed the truth on Juan. He was aiming for when it would have hurt Juan the most. Poor Miss Impacts! That wasn't the end of it. That day, I almost, I'm almost i almost certain that Celeste left a suicide note behind. And in that note, she left a detailed account of Matt's various misdeeds, of course. And so that she would never again be hurt by Matt, she chose to die. Then, 
when Wallace discovered her body, he hid that note. But why would he do that? It's simple. Juan realized that note was a powerful weapon against Matt, and it would be especially damaging to his refreshing like a spring breeze image. In any case, with his pride hurt, Juan sought revenge. Revenge. There's that word again. Juan wanted to publicly disclose the contents of that suicide note. I wondered if that was what he was going to reveal, actually. At a time that would cause Matt the most damage, of course. And that was... at the press conference after the state show. I know all about it because I heard all about it from Juan. It was so I could find out about all this that I drew close to Juan to be give, g begin with. They're quite a pair of hideous monsters, aren't they? Even Celeste's death was something for them to use in their game. That night when I found Juan's body, it was only natural that I thought the murderer was Matt. Those two were always spying on one another after all. As for me, I was frantically searching for Celeste. Stupid suicide note. Stupid? <laughs> I don't think she'd say that. No, Celeste's suicide note. I wanted to destroy it before it ever went public. What? But why? He would literally she... free everything. Because, it, again, it's... she didn't want to disrespect Celeste, I suppose? Or, like, she didn't want it to just become gossip. Like I guess that's true, earlier. yeah. But that would literally solve everything for Matt. Basically, yeah. She's been mad and that, all that nonsense. I was going to burn it. I even had brought a lighter. But I couldn't find the suicide note, and that's when revenge crossed my mind. Yes, I was going to bring them my own kind of cool revenge. Celeste was killed by those two monsters. So when I stabbed Juan's body with that knife, I didn't feel a single shred of guilt. And that's all I have to say. Well, Mr. Wright, even knowing all this, are you still going to help that man? I... I'm a lawyer. I see. What a foul profession. Thank you very much for your time and for talking with me. It was no big deal. I couldn't sleep anyway. I can't sleep either. Not with Maya's situation. Or with what I know now. So, yeah. Yeah. That for happened. Me, for me, I'd just be more scared that, like, they would come in the middle of the night to the office like, hey, 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 hey. Who's they? Uh, Matt and DeKiller. Matt's in jail, and DeKiller is hiding from the police. So I don't think that'll happen. <laughs> Still, you could hide from the police in his office. So this, we're now in a... Tough situation. We have to defend a guilty as heck client. <laughs> but I don't understand why. Because like Because if we don't, Maya's gonna die. The police are on it. I mean I The don't know. instant that the killer hears that Matt gets a guilty verdict, he's going to kill Maya. Right. E but even if the police haven't found him by then. Uh, yeah. But still so, How yeah, are they gonna transmit all that so quickly? Uh, Matt Matt can't have, or at least shouldn't have any sort of recording devices on him in court. But then again, Mr. No, no, no. But then again, Mr. Um, Acro was like, oh, don't mind me holding my gigantic bust in my wheelchair. <laughs> so it could very well be. So yeah. Tune in next time. We now know literally everything that's happened in the case, and it's literally just trying to find a way out of this for the trial period. <sighs> Very unique trial period tomorrow, because we're sure. not super trying to win, but we're also not trying to get a guilty verdict. I don't know. If it were me, I don't know. That's the moral dilemma, isn't it? And that's why people really like this case, is because or of me? the moral dilemma here. Yeah. Anyhow. It is your job. See... See it unfold in the next episode of Phoenix Wright Justice for All. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, have a great day and God bless.